uh, the board met in closed session and regarding uh, labor negotiations and legal counsel advice and no action was taken. Uh, let's see. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Any questions? I have a question about the agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is just for clarification for my purposes, because I'm recalling some things that happened in previous board meetings. When an agenda item says board action review, sometimes that means discussion, but if it's a letter, sometimes it gets passed right over. And I just want to know what review really means. And if you put the letter from our firefighters in the packet for a discussion or for passing it over? Well, please let me know if I pass anything over the agenda. I, that's certainly okay. Not my but, I mean, in the past, there have been letters included in. So let's, let's stick with today. Not today. If there's something that is passed over the agenda, please let me know. Perfect. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Anything else on the agenda? Any other comments? Okay, moving on to item E, we have our. Did you see that? Uh, no, I don't see Michael here. So oh. I would uh, okay. move to the next thing and hope that he shows. Okay, so we will come back to item E. Um, wait, is it E2? Yeah, E2. Yeah. Okay, all right, so let's move on to the budget, um, to actuals. Eric, did you want to? Sure. Um, yeah, I'll just skip through Okay. Uh, I again gave a pretty detailed uh, memo. Uh, what the, this is is a profit and loss statement, uh, otherwise commonly known as budget actuals, that uh, carries the period from July 1st through December 31st of 2017. Um, Try to leave you some levels of uh, broad picture summary in here in terms of uh, uh, what the drivers were for revenues, what the drivers were for expenditures, primary, um, as well as a small snapshot into what we are expecting uh, in terms of ad drivers for Q3, uh, and then also a, a snapshot as to where our cash balance currently stands as of. January 31st, which is one month into the third quarter. Uh, I, uh, again, so we sit at about 1.75 as of that million. Um, I think as you kind of go through and you look at some of the budget, the actual in, in here, I can certainly speak to or answer any questions that may arise from that. Uh, and then the one thing I want to walk away uh, from this topic with is uh, kind of pointing out how we've been monitoring and moving forward with the OPEB trust fund that was opened up and established at the beginning of this fiscal year. Uh, all deposits happened within the first uh, six months as planned and as budgeted. Um, we've been moving these on monthly basis uh, and looking at the numbers and where we currently stand, I would recommend A, that you not only continue to fulfill this uh, budgeted obligation, but that rather than doing it month to month, you go ahead and pay off the remaining in one payment this month uh, and try to realize and capitalize on any uh, interest uh, accruals that may occur by doing so. Questions, comments from the board? No. I just want to comment that I think it's great that we're doing these, um, the, the OPEP deposit. So if, you know, you can deposit the 30000 yeah, I think a lot of the rationale, and I don't mean to speak for the board, but my uh, understanding of the rationale behind doing this on a monthly basis was primarily pay attention to cash flow as well as uh, uh, anticipated revenues and expenditures. I think we've been on, well, we've done a, 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 I would say, a fairly remarkable job with cash flow this year. Um, to the best of my knowledge, this is probably the first year we actually haven't entered a negative cash position. We got very close, but didn't. Uh, throughout the course of the fiscal year, it's uh, which is good. Uh, you know, certainly pointing out that it represents cash flow that doesn't necessarily, uh, while it's trending in the right direction, doesn't necessarily represent uh, uh, big picture balance sheet fiscal health. 
um, but it's it's certainly a good start. All right. Are there any questions, comments, from the public? Linda? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I do have one question when and I know I'm being a real nosy body about this, but the $45,000 legal settlement that the district had to pay, what departments does that get spread over? How Fire. I'm sorry? Fire. So even though the district lost the settlement, I mean, the district lost the lawsuit, the fire department still has to pay their attorneys, I thought the attorney's fees were included. Well, to be clear, the district has to pay the attorney. The district agreed to pay the attorneys. And uh, I, it's been allocated towards the fire department because it was a matter wholly involving the fire department. So you're saying that the district agreed to pay the $45,000 settlement fee for attorney's fees, but uh, it's going to be taken out of the fire department. No, I said it's being allocated towards the fire department. It's not necessarily being taken out of the fire department. It's being allocated towards that department. It's being taken out of the district's, uh, the district's bank account, the general fund. It's an accounting. Sorry. That's fine. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments, Stephen? Yeah. Uh, last, uh, I believe it was February meeting. Anyhow, it wasn't here. Um, and listen to the uh, audio. Uh, uh, there was a discussion of uh, $5,000 that didn't balance in last year's budget, and it was written off as mysterious and uh, possibly due to the change over accounting systems. So you and know I, what page are you on, or where are you looking? I, I'm not looking at a page. Um, if you listen to what I just said. Right, but we're talking about the budget to actual. Yes, and I, I am. Please do not interrupt me. Please don't interrupt me. Right, I'm trying to follow along. No, I. You're. You're. You're interrupting. Okay, I have the floor. Please go on. Okay, thank you. So there's five thousand dollars missing. Was that ever accounted for? Actually, you have it exactly the opposite. If you're referring to what came up in the in the audit from last year, it wasn't five thousand dollars that was missing. It was closer to seven thousand dollars, and it was actually what was in our account, not missing from the account. It was seven thousand that we had, not didn't have. Uh, this was in February. Yeah, this was with the last audit. So all the books balanced the less so, that seven thousand. I think we're on the wrong topic here. I, no, I think we're on, on the topic of the financial performance of the district. So I think it's very much on topic. And if you want to uh, shut me up, Stephen, you try, okay? Okay, you're, you're No, you're you, be, you, be, you're, you have an obligation. I'm, I'm the public. I have a, a chance to speak before the board. Can you, can you wait Don't be a snob, really. You're, you're a terrible person. Um, all right, so actually now we can go back to uh, item E1 um, for the audit. <laughs> can I make one suggestion? Yes. Yeah. Close off E2 oh. first, mm -hmm. um, and then, so that way we don't go back to it. I don't know if there's anything else with okay. E2. But, uh, Was there anything else with E2? Yeah, thank, thank you for the time. comments and the uh, explanations of the variances. That was very helpful. Yes. You're welcome. So let's move uh, backwards a little bit to our 2016-17 uh, financial statements. And we have Michael here from our um, auditor for TDA firm. Who, would you like to be read the presentation? So I'm here to present financial statements. My name is Michael O'Connor. I prefer R.G. McCarty. I was the auditor in charge of the engagement. And um, feel free to answer <coughs> ask me questions. Reports the exact financial statements, these kind of statements for the district as well as the management report. Um, I'll just briefly go through some highlights. I can do these. Uh, in the financial statements, there's on um, page one and two. Um, 
that's our auditor's opinion. This is an unmodified opinion. It will be on our letterhead when it's final, and uh, we do work for the board, and our contact information will be there in case you ever have, have questions of myself anytime during the year. Feel free to contact me or, or the firm. Uh, but that's our modified opinion. That's the best opinion you can receive. There's a number of different types of opinions, but that's the best. Everything done in compliance with accounting standards and all those standards. Next, I'd like to turn to page, uh, page 8. Page 8 is your uh, statement of that position. This is a snapshot at June 30, 17. I just want to do a uh, point to the bottom. Last line to win that position is a negative uh, $78,000. I have a question. Could I ask a question? Okay, thank you. Um, deferred outflows of resources, is that primarily pensions or is there anything else in that number? No, it's just pensions. Pensions. It's okay. actually, uh, uh, you know, contributions. They, they calculate the liability a year and arrears. Mm -hmm. so, uh, most of it is your contributions for uh, the 16, 17 contributor members. Mm -hmm. put there. Got it. Okay. And outflow is the same thing, pensions, right? Outflows would be the pension, uh, yeah, pension payment, I mean, uh, contributions. <coughs> Inflows. <coughs> Inflows are their amortizing uh, gains and losses for a period of years versus, mm -hmm. you know, taking the hit off of one year. Okay. Yeah. So, um, in this particular statement, if we just look at the t total assets line and the total liabilities line, we're actually closer to um, something like 800 and some odd thousand dollars negative, if you don't account for the deferred outflows and inflows, is that correct? If you just do a simple subtraction of assets, total assets minus total liabilities. Mm -hmm. Right, it would be more of your number. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Sure. The next page is your statement of activities. Both these statements are on a protocol basis, as if you were a for profit company. On the next page, B9, it starts out with kind of your expenditures. And governments are in the business of providing services, so it starts with the expenses, cost of uh, doing business. Then you have your charges for services. And then what's left over on the right are what is subsidized by taxpayers. Um, this year you have third line from the bottom, a change in net position, $392,000 approximately in the black. As you see, you greatly reduced your net deficit. <coughs> yeah. Then the next page is page 10. Page 10 is on what's called a modified approval basis. It's similar to almost like cash basis. Um, people want to know how much money is in the pot for certain reasons. So you have your general fund there. The second line from the bottom, you have a million nine sitting in the general fund. Uh, and then measure A is 101,000. And then you have a debt service fund for 131,000. <laughs> Page 12, are your revenue and expenditures for the year, the activity of the year, um, on again, a modified pool basis, on a cash basis. Third line from the bottom, um, you had a surplus there in the general fund of 579000 approximately, and 44000 in measure A, and then there's a small loss in the debt service fund of 3000 that's all I wanted to point out in these financial statements. Behind the statements are the notes that give you more information, so district policies, county policies, and more information about the capital assets of debt, pension plan, uh, post retirement health, uh, things of that nature. I have a question. Sure. Um, I was able to follow majority of it, but what got me stumped is the page 24, note 6, and that's actually what uh, Jeff alluded to the uh, pension. Um, the deferred outflows and deferred inflows. Um, could you explain um, this in a little bit 
and I explain it. I'll explain it as best I can. So the deferred outflows, the first line say pension contribution subsequent to the measurement date. So it, the measurement date is a year behind, so that would be June 30, 16. So those are the contributions. That we would be making going. That you already made. Yeah, that's what yes. Um, but they don't impact on the following year. Okay. So obviously that would reduce the liability technically. That would be one factor in reducing your pension liabilities, all these contributions. We almost three hundred fifty thousand dollars contribution. So the next year that would drop the liability. Um, the other factors would be any change in the investments for the pension plan. And the other other amounts are actuary determined amounts. I don't know exactly. I'm not an actuary, I don't know exactly. Okay. So that's just like higher math. Okay. And the deferred inflows again are actual determined amounts. I think they're mainly allocated gains and losses over 30 years. Try to smooth out the returns mm -hmm. to get a better, I guess. You know, so that's data that's provided to you by. It's how provided. Um, so this data is actually CalPERS. You know, provide some of the information. They actually hire a company. And then take their information and formalize it so that we can put it into this report. Right. It's actually a two step process because CalPERS has to do some of their work, at which point they produce much larger reports applicable to much larger pools. Um, and then we have to hire a third party company to do specifically what's known as a GASB 68 report. Right. Um, oh, so that's, that's the report we're paying for that we have to we'll pay for? Well, we're paying for both. But uh, yes, so it has to, the CalPERS doesn't produce. The final leg needed to give to the, the, the auditor of a local agency. So those reports go to Michael, at which point they get incorporated into the audit. Thank you. There is no easy answer, I'm afraid, right? <laughs> That's a good question. Other questions? No, ma'am. Uh, any questions for the public? Did you want to go over the management report no, right. There is a management report. There's nothing significant in the report. Um, we do in the course of our audit look at the controls over the assets that the district has to safeguard them from error or fraud. So, uh, so we look at those controls and we see any areas for improvement. We recommend them. So on page four are, are those. There's only two items that were carried over from previous years. Uh, accounting manual, it's good to have all your policies and procedures in and formalized. And uh, Eric has, has done a bunch of work in that area. He's not completely, uh, uh, he's a bit of a perfectionist. And, and uh, we actually do a summary for him in the course of the audit, which he could use that. But he needs a lot more he wants to do there. So. And the other one is a payroll tax return reconciliation. We always recommend uh, payrolls, big uh, salaries, benefits, and mm -hmm. big cost to the, any organization, particularly this organization. So uh, make sure the t payroll tax return is reconciled to the general ledger. Uh, that's that's for auditors like to see. Makes us happy. Mm -hmm. but that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so do I have a motion to accept the report? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any discussion? All right. Moving on to item F, the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. I second. All those in favor? All right. Discussion? <coughs> Yeah, so we're talking about so we're lumping the consent calendar. The claims paid and the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be with you in a second. Go ahead. A couple of items on the third page. Third line. I think this is a typo. Talk is it services to the residents that it has available, not is has available. Where was that reference? Third line. Third word in on third page. And also, when I was asking questions, uh, what didn't get listed here is I, I mentioned that 
it would appear that if we started the paramedic program, at least three firefighters who would be the paramedics would get a, an increase in their pay from what they're getting today. That's what I understood, at least. That's what I said. Are you saying you don't see oh, where it is? It's not reflected the in the The pay minutes, differential so. wasn't mentioned in the okay, discussion. So I'm just updating that. Anything else? That's, that's what I have. Any questions, comments, or any comments? I have one short question. Um, on um, in the uh, bill state, I'm sorry, I didn't get to. Um, that's okay. But um, on the next to last page, um, there is building supplies for REC to the tune of $1,200. What was the number? Uh, yeah, the, the GL number, right? The no, the bill number. The bill number number. is 1840. It's a whole bunch of bills that are paid to US Bank. And then um, the GL account is five two two zero three ten. So that's just community center supplies, building supplies, anything related to the community center. As in like cement or something? No. Um, not building as in not, construction. Not construction, building just like it's building. an actual oh, building. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, like, what are we building? <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments on the... Uh, uh, 1848, 1849, Willis Land Survey. Perfect. Thank you. What was... What's that? Uh, one was actually for the creek work that was done, the second one that you see, 3489. Um, so they had to come in, it was in conjunction with the report that Nora Pacific put together. Uh, it's all part of the FEMA claims. They had to come do a topo survey as part of uh, for the, the, the geologic report that uh, mm -hmm. Nora Pacific put together for those for both those two areas. The secondary one was a topographic survey of the area over at the maintenance ship. Okay, and then the other one I'm going to bring up is the pg &E. Yes. All the different buildings that's up and straightened out? Uh, not entirely, not but uh, we were able to reconcile it out. I still have a, uh, a discrepancy that I'm working through with PG&E and, and kind of running up the ladder to the point where I might even eventually put in a claim with them. Um, but we were able to at least reconcile their billing statements uh, with what they said that we owed. Um, and now it's a matter of kind of working with them on a couple other matters, but uh, once it was reconciled and working with them, uh, decided it's best to just pay them for now and if we need to change yeah, it, we will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. And yeah, just one quick comment. Um, I just wanted to mention with regard to comments that were made during the uh, uh, last meeting that um, I think it was during the pool rates um, discussion. I'd like to say that the Marinwood Water Devils and the Marin Swim League as a whole has been one of the most broad-based and beneficial youth programs in our county. I trust that the board and all members of our community will support reasonable scheduling and practices and swim meets to accommodate the needs of this wonderful program dedicated to our young citizens and our families. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, I'll open up to it. What section was that on? Are we still on the uh, on the budget? Or I mean, on the uh, Hills cons consent calendar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't. I, don't, I didn't okay. quite follow like Jeff was saying that. Okay. Are there any comments from the public on the consent calendar? Yes, I have a couple. Um, ASCAP. We're paying for music license fees. What is that all about? We have a recording star or something? No, every time we play um, music in our camps or any um, uh, events, we actually have to pay a licensing fee. That's that's basically artists' rights that we're Well, I, I understand what ASCAP is, but to whom are we paying it and what, what are we paying for? So this is, I'm sorry, Isabella, it's it's our money. No, 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 so, no, no. so I would really like yeah. to know. 
I mean, I, I is someone looking, playing Bob Dylan? It goes to Bob Dylan, or I, I, I will I, be looking to Shane for the specifics on where exactly we're paying it to. I, I believe that that's correct. That, well, I don't know how it's it's broken down. I mean, I'll ask have breaks down the payments, but pretty much every public entity that I know that plays music um, to the quote unquote public pays the fee. It's since I I don't know be, ten years before me we were paying it, so it something. And, and is this monthly or? No, it's annual fee. All right. Um, that's it for now. Yeah. Any other comments from the public? All right. Uh, all right. Any other comments from the board? I'll call the question. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. Moving on to item G, public comments for items not on the agenda. Ron. Yes, Ron Marinoff, uh, Fire Commissioner for County Service Area 13. Uh, I had an occasion to attend a very large event at College of Marin Saturday, put on uh, by Assemblyman Levine in regard to fire safety and fire prevention. And in the course of uh, the, that program, it came, I believe, from uh, the Marin County Fire Chief that they were going to do extensive grazing on the Headfield property in Lucas Valley. That was formerly the Louise Ranch on the south side of Lucas Valley Road, from basically Mount McKinley up to Big Rock. And I thought in conjunction with grazing in other areas, which I could believe they're going to do it with the goats, I thought it might be appropriate for Marinwood to approach uh, Lucas uh, Skywalker to see if they would wish to participate, since the animals will be out there, to do grazing on the Grady Ranch to cut down the fire danger, which affects uh, Lucas Valley Estate should there be a wildland fire with a strong wind out of the west and perhaps extend the grazing into the uh, uphill portion uh, of the homes in Lucas Valley Estates. And I think it would be appropriate to talk to uh, the county fire chief and uh, Lucas about perhaps extending the grazing, because this whole uh, seminar that was put on, and it was standing room only, it's an amazing turnout, is for not only fire, protection for fire prevention due to what happened uh, last fall up north. So I think it's something that uh, Greenwood should pursue to expand the area uh, of the grazing, whether or not it would be uh, a cost to Greenwood or a cost to the property owners involved or in a cost involved to uh, County Service Area 15. Um, you, you didn't mention the draft minutes. I had some uh, quick points on that. So that was in the calendar. We put together. Okay, so I'll just uh, fill it. I didn't hear you say that. Um, so um, I, I really am hoping that we get more accurate notes in the meeting and a couple. Uh, things came out at me public time where I was portrayed as uh, telling the board to ignore the lawyers. I didn't say that. I said consider mediation and apparently uh, you know it was written in such a way that it really obscured my point. Um, please correct that. Carolyn? We have video if you Stephen, we're, uh, things that were not on the agenda. So you I am I'm I'm talking about the the, uh, the notes right. and right. I'm the draft so minutes and I no we haven't Okay, so I will continue on. I will continue on because there's additional things in the park and rec matters. Um, so the same thing was done. No, this is this is on the the uh, the draft minutes that you didn't announce. 
We did well, announce everybody. We discussed this. Everybody Even we announced it, there was time for public comment. We I can replay the tape if you wish. Okay. If you want to, if you want to interrupt me, you want to make faces, you want to smirk, you want to smile at me, or no, I, you you can do that. But I'm still going to talk, okay? Because I have that right. No, not you're out of line. Okay, so continuing on. Stephen, um, we're going to move on. The the uh, park and rec. Uh, Stephen is uh, the the me. Uh, Relax. I, I, I'm a little upset. I've got some other shit going on. I do not like this crap that you get dole out every time you are up there. Just be quiet, Except for God's sake. Don't talk over me. Please, Stephen. You're out okay. of the sheriff. Get him out of here. I, I'm upset. I told you I'm upset. Yeah, so okay, so but you but you're but you're not allowing me to speak. So you know every goddamn time you say that it just pisses me off, and I'm gonna I'm gonna respond back. Okay, so and then you think you have a right to verbally abuse everybody here in this room? Well, you deserve a uh, a, a bit of taste of what you dole out. Um. The the. Uh, the, the, the maintenance so shed, what I said, range. was within a 100-foot okay. setback so of the, the conservation area. Now, that's what I said. It's on tape. If, if she's writing something else, you're, you're not, she's not providing an accurate report. voices are very quiet so I cannot hear when you go from one to the so next I and according, so many many yelling, according and so to we've been trying to move on from um, public comment you're first. supposed to announce the agenda item clearly state the agenda item number and subject okay. and I didn't hear you end the open comments I've ended it a number of times Mr. there was somebody well else. I know so I, know I have announced it a number of times so moving on to item H district matters but this so is I a announced problem. it. I'm sorry I if you did not. So speak up. I did not hear you. Okay. You have a teeny, teeny, tiny little voice. Right. I apologize. I have a very hard time being here and running a meeting when there are people. Well, in work, I mean, we're 20 feet away from each other. It's not like you know I'm real close. So I apologize. I, maybe what I ought to do is get a microphone for you or something. But I would like to, I mean, you know I always have a comment, and I would like to make a comment. Before. Okay, so we're not at comments yet, though. We are not in a comment period. No, you're at open comment. comment. Oh, I she think she wants to You're at open comment. Oh, okay. okay. I think some people may have gotten cut off by cut off from okay. the public comment period Apologies. because of the interruption. Yes, so. exactly. Uh, are there any, so I will go back, are there any other public comments on items Thank not you. on the agenda? Yes. Okay. Of course, Barnello always wants to make a public comment. And this is something that I know some of you guys have all men and women have already heard before because you've been in the other meeting where I talked about it. But some of you have not heard my public comment about. Yeah, so we'll be able to talk about. Excuse me? Um, you've not heard my comment, of, some of you have not heard my comment about. The difference between facts and opinions 
that are written in documents. And there have been several occasions when there have been documents put into a packet, such as the Emergency Services Session Committee packet, that states some words that are not true or not factual, and they're also somewhat confrontational and inflammatory. And I would just like to suggest that before anyone and everyone puts out something that people might believe is true, they stop and think about it first because it is a little inflammatory when you say our employee group has been influenced to block this benefit to our community and to prevent their own group members from applying their skills. That's one little example. Another example is about our pension costs going out of control. Well, we can talk about lots of things here going out of control. You know, things of the kitchen is out of control for a year now. I mean, we can talk about that, but I think in order for us to be a little more copacetic, how about if we just tone down the accusatory statements and perhaps, what are you laughing at? Huh? You're laughing at me? Please don't laugh at me. I'm just saying that there are accusatory statements that appear to be fact, and these are official uh, district documents. It's not like Barnello coming up and saying something. These are documents that are saved, the public documents are read, and everybody would believe that something on a public document would be true. So I'm just saying that rather we have these little to-dos about what is or is not correct. How about if we just try really, really hard not to put out anything inflammatory and try not to put out opinions? Because if I ever see an opinion, I'm going to call somebody on it. And you know how much I love calling you guys on stuff that's wrong. I don't like to do it. I don't want to be obnoxious. And don't you laugh either. I really don't like it. But you know what? There's hardly anybody that ever comes to these meetings. And some of you know really, really well how to push my buttons. And therefore, I do respond. So I would just appreciate it. I think the um, ESS committee meetings would be a little friendlier and a little bit easier to get along with if people are not putting out the untruths and not having to correct the untruths. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, I'm going to move on. To no, the no, comments. I have a, a public comment, and I have a right to speak. Yes, I do have a right to speak, and I will be happy to continue on. The, uh, this is about communication, and uh, first of all, I'd like to support Linda's request uh, for, for you, you all to speak up. Americans in disability, American with Disabilities Act requires it, and I think the solution is to have uh, a uh, microphones at each one of your desks and a microphone out here. It should be recorded, um, and you should also follow the rules of uh, public comment, where we have a chance to speak uninterrupted, and you have a chance to also speak uninterrupted. I think if we do that and Stop with the, you know, games. Uh, we'll all communicate better. And um, it really, yeah, people are not involved here because of this toxic atmosphere that is created as a political defense. And I just, uh, it's, it's, you know, your choice if you want to conduct business that way, but uh, it certainly doesn't make it pleasant for any of us. Are there any other comments? <laughs> Okay, moving on to item H, District Matters, an update from the ESS. So I briefly started, everyone's different time left in minutes. Um, discussion, questions, comments? I'll just make a short comment. Um, there were certain comments made at the meeting about um, which Align with Linda Barnell's co our recent comments in open session about 
posting information that was um, deemed to be untrue. Um, I've looked up the primary one that was objected to, and I have um, documentation to support that particular item, and I will be happy to send it to Mr. Salvatella via email. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other from the draft minutes? All right, any uh, comments from the public on the draft minutes? Linda? We'd like to ask for the fifth time to please note that, and it's not on the agenda, the agenda's correct, it says draft minutes, but in the document, it says minutes. Minutes are not draft minutes. That's misleading, and I would like to ask that that please be fixed. Thank you. Uh, all right, so moving on to item 1B, we have a correspondence to the board of directors from our firefighters. Does anybody want to speak to this this year? Just give you a little clarification why the, the letter was, was given. Um, our group thought that it was paramount to express our wishes when it comes to the direction and future of our fire department. Uh, we truly believe it's our best and only option moving forward. We already interact and work with Santa Fe so cohesively. And from our perspective, it makes the most sense. And we wanted to make that note. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Just a quick comment. <clears throat> you you um, note at least a couple of times in this um, letter substantial savings that we should be able to uh, realize from this association. Um, I assume you've done that, you've mentioned that because you have data to back that up. And we'd be extremely interested in seeing it if you could provide that to us. Um, would next Friday be okay? Would you be able to provide this information that you're suggesting in the uh, letter to us? We'd love to look at it. Sure. That would be great. Thank you. Before you go on, are you going on? Uh, yes, I was just going to ask for comments. Not going on yet. So, comments from the public? Uh, same, same item. Yeah. Okay. About the letter. Yes. Okay. The only thing I would like to say is that I know for years how well our fire department has been working with the San Rafael Fire Department, and I was very really pleased to see this letter. I've been going to the San Rafael Fire Commission meetings for over two years, and so I hear from both sides how things are working, and I am amazed every single time that I find out something new, such as when we had our ferry truck down in Southern California working on a strike team, San Rafael gave us a fire truck to use for over two weeks. We didn't pay anything for it. Um, I just found out from the chief's meeting last week that our paramedics, our so-called paramedics who don't work as paramedics, have been able to use San Rafael to keep up their skills. I mean, it's definitely on their own time, but it's also a benefit that San Rafael allows us to have our, our paramedics work on shifts with San Rafael to keep up their paramedic skills. And I just think that our fire department really knows intricately what the benefits we already get from San Rafael are. And I know how everybody works, and I've seen things at the fire commission meetings from um, Chief Ray and Chief Sinnott and, and firefighters from San Rafael that I've talked to. So I just want to say I really appreciate the fact that our firefighters have come up with this letter and have written it, and hopefully this will get things going because the committee has been going on since October, and I don't think we've even talked to any of these three fire departments yet. So. I just, I just wanted to say how pleased I am with the letter. But I don't know Thank if you, you heard my report that we have talked to two fire departments and we're talking to the I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I, right. I. <laughs> Would you like me to try? Sure. The committee has talked to two fire departments already and has scheduled a third meeting. 
Oh, great. Thank you. Sure. When did, did that happen just in the last few days? Well, I reported that at the last ESS meeting, that the meetings were all scheduled and the dates and the times. Well, and but to it things meetings. get canceled. No, I, I reported out the schedule and it had to have right. two of the meetings. So. Thank you. Yes. I, um, all right. So, Mike, I have a uh, uh, comment. Um, I would urge, first of all, I think the idea of what the firefighters are talking about has merit. However, I am concerned that doing this piecemeal is the wrong way to go about it. We have the big issue of the future of the fire department, and that needs to be uh, solved first. If we end up doling it out piece by piece, I think it's going to uh, uh, eliminate options. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very upset that we get taxed for paramedic services and we don't get paramedic services. That seems to be wrong. I'm really upset with the, 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 lit, lit, the litigation that happened this last year. I realize we have to make some changes, but let's make it uh, in the right direction for the good of the community and, quite frankly, the good of the firefighters. All right, thank you. Any other comments? It seems to me that there's there's a there's there's a lot of information out here about the future of the firefighters, and uh, I just hope that however it works out, that is for the benefit of us, of us all, that we can all get the benefit, you know, win-win situation in all this. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it, and, and I appreciate all the information that all of you bring forth so that we can make the appropriate decisions at the right time. That's all. I'd like to say that when we um, created this committee to look into this, the citizens of Marinwood, the taxpayers of Marinwood, and the citizens of the areas that we cover were listed as priority stakeholders. So this committee is definitely looking to um, support their financial needs as well as the future um, operation of the fire service in this district. So you can count on the fact we'll be looking at that closely. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? All right, let's move on to item H2, our internal controls and fraud prevention policy. So um, this is, if I may, the um, second presentation of this draft. The first one uh, happened a month ago. Um, there were no substantial, there were no changes or comments really from the board or public, but for the benefit of um, allowing the public extra time to review the document and uh, transparency in government dealings, we are presenting it again. Um, uh, hopefully we can adopt it this time. Um, it um, fairly formalizes what's already in place. It doesn't um, introduce any earth-shaking changes to the operation of the district, but um, in order to um, put a solid backbone into our district in terms of um, policies that uh, we can refer to, um, and be more proactive rather than reactive in how we deal um, with issues that may arise. Um, this is basically just one of many documents that are uh, that have been furnished um, over the last two years um, that will, again, hopefully give more backbone um, into district operations. curiosity it does seem to say something about um, um, initial instruction on fraud prevent prevention upon hire 
I'm wondering, do we do an annual refresher? Or should we? Should to, keep it, sure. to, to keep it on top of everyone's mind. Um, that might be something to do as well. I'm not trying to make a big deal out of this. I just think that, you know, some of us have been, or some of you may have been here for over a decade, and, you know, if the last time you heard this was when you were hired, it might be to go through it again. Right. Well, but, and then I think to answer some of your other questions, too, some of the people who do get this on an annual basis are seasonal employees, and it's being talked to about them from the people who've been here for 10 years. And okay. So it stays top of mind, and most of the practices that came out of here actually come from those seasonal activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, is there anything, and I may have missed it, is there anything about um, use of physical assets, inventories, shrinkage, et cetera, et cetera, um, that should be included in such a policy? You know, it, it pays very, very strict attention to the financial aspects, you know, collecting cash, mm -hmm. um, systems of record, when, um, you know, that are reconciled, et cetera, et cetera. We do uh, send, spend a certain amount of money on inventories and things like that. I just wonder if we occasionally take an inventory and make sure that we're uh, uh, not losing anything out the door. Um, finally, on this payroll reconciliation item that was brought up in the edit, in the uh, audit, um, we had a uh, bookkeeper consultant. I'm not quite sure what her. We had somebody who was doing third party reconciliations with right. the county general fund. Yeah, I'm wondering is there a use for that on an ongoing basis? For I think they mentioned quarterly to do the payroll reconciliation to the general fund. Um, yeah, there's a, that be there is a use for it. We do reconcile in. Uh, not on a quarterly basis, like Michael said, but every uh, it also coordinates with our workers' comp reconciliations as well as that because all payroll records as well as quarterly tax returns have to get submitted as part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we tie them all out then at that point in time as well. But certainly something we could explore. She hasn't been in for a while. She has been out on a maternity for a few months now. Uh, so she needs to come back and kind of pick back up where she left off. Right. But it could be explored. Just an idea. Thank you. No, well, she actually enjoys that kind of stuff. Very good. Thanks. Other comments, questions? Comments from the public? Uh, yeah. So, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations, Isabel, for another fine effort here. I, I'm glad we're, we're putting this in place. Um, I do feel, however, it is incomplete, and I'm trying to think how it can be more complete. It seems like it's a closed loop. Um, the uh, first part of this is describing the fraud, but then the irregularity, um, uh, the, the district manager will promptly investigate, and then in case the district manager is a su suspected party, uh, it is the board president of the board of directors so that's a very closed um, uh, very closed uh, reporting structure and I'm wondering what can be done to make certain that there's more light shed on uh, such problems um, it's you know uh, and, and don't don't take this personally I'm not I, I, I'm just throwing this out here if if we had a district manager who wanted to cover up uh, an irregularity, it seems very possible that it could happen. Likewise, the president could uh, possibly mo be motivated the same. I think we need a third party, some uh, independent party that is either coming through on a regular basis to uh, make sure the, prof the everything has integrity. I, I just I just think that this policy is too limited in scope and it doesn't really fully address uh, the transparency that uh, is the objective of of this this policy. So that's my comment. May, may I reply? So um, thank you for the comment. Um, it's obvious that due to the size of the district, we don't have as many possibilities for multi-level 
controls that might be available to larger districts that basically have more employees. Um, and uh, I can see a point how there is really not much more room to maneuver, and I would be open to you suggesting a way that we could enhance it. Well, it seemed to me that it should be more than just the president of the board. It should be open to all the members of the board, at the very least. But at, in this moment, uh, we have to deal with this in an open session. And I would have issues with discussing accusations rather than facts in an open session. Oh, I see your point. That's, that's a point well taken. But, but you see what I'm, what I'm saying is that it just needs to be a little bit broader it That's does, you see, so, so like it, it does say that the president could either investigate himself or herself or appoint an investigator. Right. And that's basically the door um, for the board to say, you know, we can also appoint an external party, like you mentioned, whether, whether it's, you know, obviously police would be <coughs> Right, right. Uh, so so I, I don't have expertise in this area, but I think that is someone who is educated in this area might have a uh, So I have, I've reviewed several policies, you know, again, we're right. not the first ones to, to invent the wheel, right. and I have looked at other um, organizations that have similar things, and none of them really refer to such person, otherwise I would have absolutely adopted it. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, any other comments from the public? I will call the question. Oh. All those in I'm sorry, so given the feedback um, and uh, request for inventory of physical assets and the payroll reconciliation, I would want to, um, again, postpone the motion next moment. Do we need to withdraw the motion? We can, can I just make a comment? Here. Can I comment? I think the um, policy as it stands right now is a major step forward and it should be adopted. Um, Policies are not one-time agreements. Yeah. We can put those on a table for further investigation, and we can adjust the policy at oh. some point in the future. If that's um, acceptable, absolutely. Yeah, to, I think to Jeff's point, too, I mean, he definitely got my mind working on wondering if some of that maybe is more of an inventory uh, management policy. You know, it's, it's all a standalone thing outside of this, which is much more financially uh, based. So. We can look into what other things of that nature exist. I, I haven't seen them incorporated into this type of a document, but I'm sure that there are standalones and things like that, too. So. All right. Well, let's try calling the question again. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Good work. All right, moving on to the district manager's report, item H3. Okay, well, uh, you know, there's several things going on here. The largest piece of news within the report, obviously, is that Shane DeMarta has tendered his resignation. Uh, he's going to be leaving, starting a competitive rec business that he's going to open up on the other side of the freeway and uh, steal all of our employees. It's kind of how I understand it was going to work. Um, so because he was going to do that, I had to act very swiftly to secure the employees that we had. Uh, uh, to be very uh, honest with you, uh, Shane has put in his resignation. His last day will be on March 2nd. Um, you know, and as I put in here, and I can speak openly and uh, honestly about that, uh, you know, we're all very sad to see Shane go. He's been a staple of this district and this community for a long time, and he's done a lot of really amazing things uh, well beyond simply the recreation department. Uh, with that said, I am equally, if not more so, excited for him. I know he's going to pursue some other career and life opportunities. Uh, and I'll just take one moment just to openly thank Shane for everything he's done in my very brief time here, uh, including my time as a commissioner, uh, and thank him as somebody who lives in this community who sort of did participate in a lot of the programs he helped to bring uh, to where they are now. So that's embarrassing. Like a pause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, because life does go on and rec programs do continue and park maintenance still has needs. Um, and after a lot of thought as well as conversations with other key personnel, 
uh, I have offered and he has accepted the position of Recreation Director to Luke Fretwell. Cool. So, yeah. with that said, uh, Luke is, you know, I wrote in here, he's been with this district for over nine years. Yeah, I'm really excited to work with him in this capacity. I think it's not only going to be a great opportunity for Luke, uh, but a great opportunity for the district to move Luke into that role and see where it starts to go. Um, and he inherits a really, really strong staff and Robert Bruton, our other part rec supervisor, as well as uh, hardworking recreation staff, seasonal employees, preschool employees, after school employees. Uh, and I have no doubt that he's gonna have a tremendous amount of support from everybody here. So we're very excited for that. And I certainly offer Luke congratulations and a uh, get your sleep now uh, advice. Uh, any questions on any of that? You know, um, has he signed the no competition form yet? Well, he said, Luke? No. Or Shane? Shane. Yeah, non disclosed cause? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, not compete. <laughs> no, actually, he wants us to take on his program. So. Oh, I see. Uh, no, it, it's a good move all the way around. Again, we're happy for Shane. We're sad to see him go. And transition always brings challenge, but transition always brings opportunity as well. <clears> and uh, I'm sure we will experience both in the next short time. Um, Luke and I uh, have spent a considerable amount of time, uh, to Shane's credit, he has spent a considerable amount of time trying to document everything the best that he can so that Luke has the fallback documents. And you know, Shane's not gonna disappear. He spent way too many years here. He will be a phone call away if we need a piece of information. You know and, uh, where he lives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but again, um, you know, really congratulations to Luke. I know he's excited. I don't know if you wanted to say anything at all about this, Luke. Uh, yeah, I'm um, honored and uh, intimidated uh, by, by the opportunity. And um, Shane has big shoes to fill. And uh, I really appreciate all the, the training he's been giving me this, this last couple of weeks to um, try to learn as much as I can. And um, it's a really classy way to go out and try to um, put things in place that everything's functioning at the highest level possible. So I really appreciate that. And, um, We'll definitely be making use of that phone call away. Uh, on so, uh, Congratulations to you both. Yeah, so leaving you in good hands. You guys will be trying. Yeah, I agree. Um, other items on here. Obviously, we've already started piecing together the 1819 operating budget. Um, so there'll be a lot of work going into that over the next several months. I've tried to list. Uh, uh, some various dates, mostly for public consumption, but also for the board's knowledge as well, in terms of <coughs> times and opportunities when various uh, IAE, either department budgets or uh, district-wide budgets, uh, proposals and progress uh, drafts will be uh, presented and discussed in public meeting settings. Um, one thing that we always do is we hold together a uh, standalone public budget hearing for the last two years at least, maybe three, that budget hearing has uh, been immediately before the April Park and Recreation uh, Commission meeting. I would certainly suggest doing it at that time again. With that said, I know I'm putting everybody on the spot in terms of your calendar, so if you could just kind of let me know if you have availability. Uh, the Park and Rec meeting starts at 7.30. I think typically we start this at six. Usually lasts less than an hour. Uh, and that usually is the final draft rolling up to uh, hopefully what will be the proposed final adoption on May 8th. Uh, with that said, it still gives us time. We don't, we don't technically have to adopt until prior to the, well, even after, but uh, you still have the June meeting, but my goal is certainly to take back in all feedback, have all relevant information needed, and have a budget that I'm comfortable uh, asking to be adopted at the May regular board meeting. Um, okay. Um, would you be able to do the park and rec uh, budget this this month? And then I seriously doubt it. Oh. Not in two weeks. Yeah. Or a week and a half by the time that it need to be yeah. posted. We're just not quite there yet. Uh, and then finally, uh, on the park maintenance facility uh, replacement initiative, we keep moving forward there. Uh, I'm in process and basically just a signature away at this point of entering into a type of materials agreement with an architect uh, who will put together some initial schematic design uh, in cooperation with us. Uh, part of the agreement is also uh, 
putting together everything that is needed to submit our site plan review application so that the county can uh, issue a formal opinion on the site, on the location, on everything else that goes with it. Um, there will be three primary aspects of the architect services. One will be the initial schematic design, uh, preparation and submittal of the complete site plan review application. Uh, another one will be the creation of construction plans and bidding documents. Uh, and then the final piece would be construction oversight, but until we go through the initial schematic design and submittal and response to the site plan review application, uh, uh, that's first, and the other things won't happen until we get through that process. Uh, the creation of construction plans and bidding documents will also go into, uh, at that point, we know we'll be able to move forward with building permit. <coughs> I do. What's the cost of the camp? Um, well, this is a, it, yeah, it's a T and M. It's a time and materials agreement. You know, uh, in working, you know, kind of some backwards math with them. And while a lot of it is very hard to, it's not a, any sort of flat numbers. And none of the people were really able to go on flat numbers. We're kind of looking at an overall scope of architect services uh, estimated at this point in time somewhere around twelve thousand. That includes all phases. some amounts shared with the person responsible for the increase in revenue. And I think uh, it would do well for the board to look into something like that uh, and hopefully uh, inspire the new person to uh, follow in the footsteps uh, of Shane as far as uh, the excellent programs and the increase in revenue generated. schematic design preparation and submittal of complete site plan review application creation of plans and bidding documents, et cetera, et cetera. Full nine yards. I'm sorry? Yeah, all of it. All of it. Okay. So roughly the model that we worked off of is that our soft costs of a construction project tend to be twenty percent of the hard costs, meaning the actual building. So if you were looking at it roughly a uh, hundred thousand dollar building you've got twenty thousand dollars in soft costs of which architectural services uh, tend to be uh, about sixty percent sixty percent of twenty thousand is about twelve thousand this getting a lot bigger than it was two years ago I, I guess I just offer another project I've been working on my architectural costs are in the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range and I think that's very average it's so standard. cheap two years ago Okay, thanks. It's, well, we're here now. Um, doesn't do any good. To, uh, okay, uh, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, Shane it has been absolutely awesome, and I, I'm glad he's getting recognition. Um, and I think Luke uh, is fantastic too. I remember when I person before him and then when Luke came it was night and day difference over there at the pool and I've always admired the way uh, Luke has interacted with the public and his staff. Um, I am I, I'm going to ask this question because um, 
two things pop out of me. First of all, was this position advertised? I'd still probably want to hire Luke, but but uh, was it advertised? You know, to other uh, people. And then secondly, there's been no discussion of his pay grade or anything like that. So uh, it just seems like I'm, you know, you did the right thing by you know telling Luke, hey, we want you, uh, but. I'm not sure if all the steps were followed. Um, legal, legally required steps. I don't know if it's legally required or not, but I always see government uh, positions advertised, so I assume that that is a requirement. Um, and then uh, finally with the park maintenance facility, um, I understand you have to hire an architect for site plan. Um, and it seems like you're only looking at one site still. Um, however, uh, and you are have been informed multiple times that that is uh, within the uh, the setback uh, easement. Um, so uh, I sent you guys information about kit um, sheds that can be had for less than twenty thousand dollars and. Um, this idea that uh, it seems like a very uh, simple project. Basically, you're looking at a garage uh, that has been made way complex and way expensive and possibly will involve litigation. I, ex I really strongly recommend that you evaluate this again. Uh, and if you need some additional advice on the outside, um, I think people will uh, be happy to inform you uh, that you've got a problem uh, with that site. That being said, it's our park and it takes up way too much space for three guys. We can use that space better and I think for me that's actually the, the more important thing is that we use our parks well. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right. Thank you. Moving on to fire department matters. We've got the draft minutes from the fire commission meeting on February 8th. Any, uh, any question on the minutes? I would just like to touch on the, there was a motion in a second from the commission about the kitchen remodel. I just wanted to make sure you guys all noted because that will be discussed later. Uh, everything else I'll cover in the chief's report. Unless there are questions, then Ron left. Ron left. Steve, sir, if you have anything to add. Steve Frax, one of our new fire commissioners, he's been to some meetings, I'm sure you met him, and also while he's here, William Kelly in the back, he's your new firefighter, slash firefighter paramedic. Um, he's doing a great job, he'll have a lot of shit by the end of the month. Oh, okay. sorry, Lance, you want to go first? Yeah, he's first. Um, my question is to vegetation management. And um, you mentioned that um, we currently only allocate ten thousand dollars, and it covers only um, about two projects. So. Right. So, how many miles of interface land um, do we have? I'd say you have about seven, eight, seven, eight miles. And I'm actually working on putting together a report for you guys to view all of the interface lands and actually get a good view as to what our threat is. It's, then, it's substantial. Right, because you said that it, it basically um, amounts to like $20,000 a mile, which is $1,000 per home. And um, another question is, is the fire department the, the performing the actual work? No, I contract that out okay. with either North Bay Conservation Corps or the Tam Fire Crew. And um, it, when you put together the report, would you please include um, their estimates? For sure, them? absolutely. Yeah. And this is really, I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is the hot topic right now based on what went on right. in the North Bay and Santa Barbara, and you know, we're not immune to having the same thing happen here. It's, uh, and I'm getting tons of calls from residents who feel it's the district and fire department's responsibility, and I'm having to explain that, well, maybe it isn't. You bought this home near the interface, you can do something to protect your home and garden your home to give us a chance. It's not a popular, it's not a popular answer for one of them. Um, 
this. Is this online? It's not online yet, and it's uh, but I'll get it up on the website. Um, there's a couple other good ones I'm looking for. That one's kind of a lot of pages. I think we can make it better. Okay. Wait, I was just going to go that line, Jeff. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment on um, some of the uh, comments that were made on the Fire Commission. Um, as part of the ESS committee, I've had the fortunate role to be the messenger of gloom and doom. And um, I just wanted to mention one thing to clarify. Um, <clears throat> while our district was the last agency in the room, who should have considered offering the unsustainable 3 of 50 pension plan. Um, we must acknowledge, however short-sighted that was, to offer that plan, it was negotiated in good faith. It's incre it is the increasing liability, the upfront payments, and the intransigence of the public pension agreements would have, which have brought us to this point, not the firefighters. I just wanted to make that abundantly clear. Thank you. Yeah. Or, or first. She's going in order. Yeah. The fire assessment, is that going to be the email, part of the email that just I saw today or so yesterday? Pascal's got yeah. some of the information, but I'm actually going to work with Sean Day and do some drone work and um, so some of that was. They'll be a, Couple of different things pretty much. Yeah. Perhaps it when it's yeah. cited out the way that's cited out. Pascal's a pretty bright dude. Yeah. Like he does risk assessment for insurance uh, organizations. So. Yeah, it kind of brings it all home. Well, yeah. Fortunately, our houses are in the good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Notice My that. house will go before your house, but <laughs> <laughs> still. I'm done. Uh, last week I, I brought up the subject of vegetation management and I looked at the two handouts, the one that I call the district handout, which you created, I assume. Yes. And then there's that other one. And I look at that and then I look at the comments on vegetation management. And I don't think we have our act together quite yet. Uh, and I was hoping that we could be more proactive in explaining to people what they had the ability to do and make it extremely easy to do it. Uh, in the handout, you talk about mowing grass primarily. Here you say clear brush. Somewhere in there you say if you're going to do anything more than little brush and grass, you need probably. to get permission. And I'm questioning why someone would need to have, I think someone ought to be able to trim the brush and the trees down to stubble within 100 feet of their property on our open space, if they want to do it, and limb up the trees and take out the bigger brush. And we ought to be supporting them doing it, not in any way standing in, in front of them. Uh, maybe the open space district has different rules that would affect the perimeter properties in Lucas Valley Estates, but maybe they could be convinced to be a little more liberal with their requirements as well. But I think we really need to you know, you're saying it's, it's the hard message to give, but at least you ought to give, I think, a clear and as big a message as you can. So at least, oh, go ahead. Okay, the other thing that's, you know, I, I'm thinking of my house, I'm a number of houses away from the perimeter, but where was I reading? I, you sent an email out about, uh, Mill it, about Mill Valley, which was seemed sort of silly for most of our community, but maybe, and I don't know if we have the power to do it, we ought to be recommending, if not prohibiting, certain kinds of, of landscaping anywhere on property in the district. I'm thinking of pompous grass, bamboo, and, and juniper. I know the city of Center Fell set up a, a program like that, and they picked a couple of neighborhoods to be examples. And I remember my cousin just really upset having to tear out a whole front yard and after they fit, apparently after they finished this demonstration year, they let the staff go and haven't proceeded with the program at all. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what I hear. I don't know if it's a fact, Linda, but that's what I hear. Yeah, we have a lot of good points, and I agree that but we should have a simplistic message to get out to as many residents as we can. And it's something I've been talking with the CERT community, the CERT team, to help me get that information out to homeowners. 
because next door emails that aren't working, sometimes we just have to get flyers or mailers in their hand. Um, so outreach, I think, is a big part of it. Um, I think there probably needs to be an increased commitment from the, the board, which would be in our budget, for maybe some additional projects that we do. Um, I think clarification on the policy is good. We've, we've typically followed and have adopted the open space district's policy for vegetation management. That's not to say we can't do something that's more aggressive. Uh, I think that might be a good time to do it. Um, Santa Fe, like you say, has adopted an ordinance and it's very aggressive for people who live in the Wooey. They have to remove all bamboo and juniper. Um, I've never really wanted to be that hard line with the policy just because I operate under this is my home and it's my palace and I don't want people telling me what they can do. But after seeing what happened, uh, I got juniper in my front yard and they're coming out. So, you know, I'm willing to change my position on that. And if we need to take a little bit harder line, I think it might be a good thing to do. And I think now's the time to do it because we'll, you know, it's a hot topic and I think we'll get some more support than we had it previously. Can I add to that though? My basic understanding is that uh, you know, even with the Santa Fe or other cities, those are city ordinances that are passed, not necessarily uh, through, say, strictly the fire department. I don't, I don't know that the district has the authority to. I think that would more likely fall on the county to pass such an ordinance uh, to be imposed upon homeowners. I don't know that, but I don't know that the district, even with uh, the responsibility for fire protection, has the authority to, to uh, not only enforce just to pass such an ordinance. But being proactive, we could sure recommend yeah, sure. that certain plant materials are removed and replaced. 100%. Now, I, I can tell you this very quickly, especially with some of the stuff that's gone on the last week with the Firewise workshop and then, uh, you know, Mark Levine's uh, town hall meeting at College we're in. This is on everybody's radar right now. And we're two weeks from no rain to being right back into fire season. So it's literally year round right now. Whereas I strongly pick up vibes of an incoming uh, uh, defensible space policy coming our way, um, I think it will be um, a very challenging one for us to uh, agree on. I think we all. I think we all agree that keeping our uh, residents safe is the top priority. Um, no matter how we do it, whether it's you know 100 feet or 20 feet, or does that include trees or just shrubbery? And uh, uh, you know, as we know, um, some residents may affect um, hills that might be sliding into their homes. Um, when they remove trees or uh, you know put other vegetation into the hills that you know affects the structure of the hill again you are the engineer but i think it will be um one that i'll be working closely with you on Friday. Yeah, I, I, one thing i didn't say was remove trees and no, do it, no any digging it's all trimming leaving a stubble It all grows back, like you say, so that means it's maintenance, too. And it, or for any uh, new construction um, or substantial remodel, I, I have the ability to do a vegetation management plan for the residents, which includes things like drought-resistant plants, uh, fire-retardant plants. So I have a list of those that I recommend to homeowners. But, but do you have the ability to police it after they've moved in to see that they maintain it? I think um, I know the answer. Uh, yeah, you know the answer. <laughs> I mean, I do like post, you know, I have to do a post uh, project inspection, but that's not to say six months later, I don't, I don't know what's going on in the backyard. So in our valley, we for all intents and purposes live in a wind tunnel. You do, but luckily we live at the bottom of the valley and typically wildland fires follow the slope, of the slope, some are wind driven, but even if it's wind driven, typically burns uphill. Our biggest threat is an easterly wind uh, fire that starts in Pacheco Valley. I've seen the models of those and it doesn't end nicely. But embers do blow yeah. in the wind. Yes. Yeah. So we could also be affected by a major fire west of us. Yes. Okay. All uh, Ron's idea of getting Grady Ridge 
crazy off. So. Yeah. yeah, so I did talk to Ron about that earlier, and uh, I do have phone calls into Jason and Mark Horst is the chief at Skywalker to see if that's something you're interested in. Does that complement, you, you mentioned two agencies instead of, what is it, Goats R Us or yeah. something like that? Um, yeah, yeah, they're not um, cheap. <laughs> oh, they're not? No. Okay, so it, from a cost perspective, the two agencies that you were talking to are probably uh, more cost effective. Would that be true? Yes, but I would say, I mean, if Skywalker's motivated, they have uh, probably a better financial position than County Fire or Renwood. I see. Okay. Very good. Anything else on this? Questions from the public? Comments from the public? Yes. First of all, I'd like to thank you for voting me in as, a, as an alternate uh, fire commissioner. Commissioner, I was at the meeting, and I have to say it was very transparent. It was simple. It was clear. We went over a lot of vegetation things, which was cool. The chief had a lot of good answers. And when he did, he said he did have an answer. Uh, there was good comment from all the other commissioners, and I thought the meeting was going very well. And I was, as a newcomer, and you know, not knowing all the, the terms and things, I was quite impressed with it. First comment. <clears throat> Second comment, we talked about the whole thing of forcing people to do stuff. And it, it just doesn't work. Even in San Francisco, if you had code violations in your, in your house, they're not going to do anything about it until you do new construction. And then that's the only time that they'll actually enforce the law. It's been that way for years and years and years. So you could have things, you could have light switches in there that are 50 years old and still spark and everything else, and they're not going to do anything about it. So it's all based on new construction. So I'm not saying that we have to take that, or you have to take that task here, but it's just something to keep in mind. Third, the chief came by my house <coughs> and he talked to the powers that be. And uh, it wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm uh, going to take all kinds of trees and things out. So I will, I will actually make an attempt, a good attempt, to try to do that. So, but we did take a whole bunch of stuff behind our house out, and I think that's another problem. Is sometimes neighbors, and we have some neighbors that throw their stuff from the grass and all these other things, they throw it in the back of their house because it's, you know, it's open space, you know. <laughs> open gun. Exactly. Yeah, and it eventually, you know, it breaks down into manure or something like that. So, but considering the, the fires that we've had, maybe it's a good idea to take a second look at some of that. So. And somebody mentioned something about CERT. I used to teach NERT, which is a very similar program in San Francisco, and you'd be surprised the motivation you get from people with face-to-face -face contact. It's amazing. And these people would learn all these crazy, unbelievable things, and they come to these drills. I'm, I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of people come to these drills. And they would they put up these structures. They put, you know, we get everybody all dressed up in uh, injuries with blood and everything, and they would do all the stuff that, that was necessary to, to help them and fix them. So I'm, that's a good idea, using CERT as possibly getting the word out. That's it. Thank you. Other comments? Ron? Yeah, we're a little more aggressive uh, in CSA 13. We have a series of letters that we send out uh, the first one is notifying them what they have to do, and if they don't do it in 30 days, the second letter tells them they have to do it, and the third letter is threatening and nasty, and that gets results. And we threaten them with legal action if they don't do it. We have virtually 99% compliance with the 100-foot setback from people's back fences. Not 100 feet from the house, 100 feet from the fence that uh, borders the open space. It can be done. Uh, the Greenwood used to have a, a very active homeowners association, and that would be sort of a natural activity, I think, at one time they did, but that's gone by the board now. Uh, I think the, uh, the first thing to do, and I don't know whether uh, Marinwood is a, in a position to finance it, 
is get a list uh, of the names and addresses uh, of all the perimeter homes that, that border the open space. And then uh, we'd be happy to share with uh, Chief Roach uh, the series of letters that uh, we send out that have been uh, very effective. And there's such a thing called the State Resources Code, which theoretically gives an entity the power to enforce that. And the problem is uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy involved in trying to enforce the State Resources Code. And I talked to uh, Assemblyman uh, Levine about that. If the state could tighten that up so it is not such a laborious process to get the work done. So we need help uh, at the state level uh, and at the county level, this grazing, uh, that, uh, the county fire department that is pushing as well as uh, fire departments, I think in San Anselmo and Mill Valley, they're doing uh, a whole area uh, with, the, uh, with the grazing. And whether it's uh, sheep or whether it's goats, the goats will eat anything, so they're probably better than, uh, than the sheep. But they also did the goats on uh, Smith Ranch Road behind the uh, assisted living care facility that's out there just before you uh, get to the ball fields. Behind there, behind that facility, and the uh, Louise Ranch, or rather the, uh, the dairy ranch there, there was a herd of goats out there this, uh, last year, uh, chopping that down. So uh, they'll eat anything, and it's, uh, it's incredibly uh, effective, and some people, uh, may not like goats over their back fence for two or three weeks, but uh, that's tough. You want to live in the country, uh, sometimes you have to put up with things like that. Interesting. Excellent. Thank you. Linda, do you have a comment? Two little ones. One, um, the open space that we have around here where we live, some of it's Marin Wood open space, some of it belongs to the county, and is there Water district? Do we have any water district open space that borders our? No, no. Okay. No. Lucas Valley. So we only have just Marin Wood and County. And Lucas Valley. No. Water County Service Area 13. CSA 13. Is. Oh, okay. Okay. And the other one is how much will is the board willing to spend on this little startup and enforcement and reviews and everything? I mean, a couple of years ago. We um, pass out flyers, oh here I go again, talking about passing out flyers, but I, I pass out flyers to every single house that bordered open space and saved a bunch of mail order money. I wouldn't mind doing that, but who's gonna knock on doors? Who's gonna be checking the open space? How much money is the board willing to put in their budget? Because now we, we have vegetation management at 10 grand for a different kind of thing, but um, it's just something for you guys to think about if you're going to go this way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, so 100 feet is uh, is pretty long uh, amount. If far, uh, and just to give you an idea, it's the distance from the fence line near the maintenance shed to uh, to Miller, or yeah, to Miller Creek, top of the bank, Miller Creek. Um, seven or eight miles, you're talking about, I would imagine, hundreds of acres. Um, the policy in Tiburon is 100 feet from inhabitable structures. And so what that means is it's probably no more than 50 feet uh, of swath, maybe in some cases 20 feet. Um, and I think that uh, the 100-foot swath, I understand people want to be safe. I think it's way over-aggressive. Uh, we have to balance the needs of open space versus fire safety. And um, I urge you to be consistent with 
timber on, and, and if you're going to have 100 feet, make it from the inhabitable structures, not the fence line, because that could really seriously damage our open space. There's, that, that includes a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the trails uh, going up the valley, and I, I really don't want to see stubble everywhere. Um, so just a, a sensible policy makes sense, but uh, let's not extend it. Also, uh, you need to specify that that does not include Marinwood Park. because that was designated as open space as well. And also I think uh, uh, Blackstone Canyon, uh, which is a ni another nice recreation area, we don't want to clear cut that. So um, just smart policies I'm asking for. Yeah, I would, I, I would have to agree with that. I think it's just too hard, too expensive to expect each homeowner to, to take it out that far. So uh, I think I would have to agree with that. You know, to be reasonable, because we talked about this in the fire commission meeting, and they, they said they spent five thousand dollars to clear out an area, chief. Right? It was an area that you guys cleared out yeah. and was back in two years. It was back in yeah, depending on the rain. Sometimes one season. So all this will grow back eventually. So a reasonable policy would be good, I think. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Let's move on to kitchen remodel project, current status, and options. I think I'd say I got a kick out of reading the right? Yeah, you made me relive some stuff, but it was pretty accurate and good. Uh, so a lot of I cleared here is pretty detailed memo, uh, just in regards to where you currently stand. Um, obviously, uh, as already been discussed, that through the last uh, seal bidding uh, process, there were zero bids received. So that actually creates different types of options for the district and how they can move forward. I have listed those out here. Again, this is uh, keeping the project as currently designed for the most part. Uh, in short, option one, the district can re-engage uh, in an informal bidding process by directly identifying and negotiating with qualified contractors. I cited uh, a lot of legal opinion and case, uh, case law as to why that is the case. Uh, obviously, uh, when you get to that point, such a contract would still need to be approved by the board, but it allows uh, staff ability to start at least working in that direction you're not quite so tied into a very rigid set of plans which you are tied into uh, when you go through a bidding process through rfps because you cannot make very substantive changes after the fact to those as we have learned um, and we could go from there it does not relieve you of the burden of needing to use uh, ultimately uh, Department of Industrial Relations registered contractors uh, or the prevailing wage burden. You still have to go through that. This is still a qualified public works project. Um, the other option would be reissue a uh, request, public notice, and go through that whole process again. I certainly wouldn't recommend such a thing. And then uh, just kind of for historical context on this project, uh, I kind of tried to give a brief timeline on what uh, what brought us to this point and where we're at. I'd say at this point in time, uh, Chief and myself are just kind of looking for uh, you know some general board direction on which ways to go, so we don't kind of spin wheels. My experience is that if we are required to follow SB 54 and the prevailing wage letter of the law, that you're going to need to spend eighty-seven thousand dollars on the kitchen. Or reduce the scope of the project. Didn't did we reduce the scope of the project with the last car? We did, but not entirely. Minor scope. Yeah. So you think? It's a I wouldn't recommend reducing the scope of the project either. Right, but the seventy thousand dollars that's being managed. Seventy thousand dollars. Is the job done? Or it's eighty-seven thousand. Eighty-seven thousand gets the job done by SB eight fifty-four. Seventy thousand dollars gets the job done by me calling John Pope and negotiating that. So, so maybe, maybe we don't want to hear some of this stuff. Maybe we no, should just. No, you say, don't want to hand, hear some yeah, of this stuff. Right. <laughs> so what? So do we want to make a motion with a cap of eighty-seven thousand? 
Well, either way, you're going to need to have a contract that's going to be brought back to you for approval. I don't, you're not in a motion point in time right now. I think, again, we're just looking for direction based on the options that are available to us right now to keep uh, the project substantially as currently designed. Um, I did have a conversation just yesterday with the Marin Builders Association, and they'll certainly uh, continue to help and kind of push this out uh, even to some of their smaller contractors who they believe are qualified on the prevailing wage side. Um, and, you know, with us being able to sit down and bring people in, talk to them about the project, people who do this for a living might have other ideas on ways to be uh, creative. I think that was what, a little bit of what we found prior to going into the bidding process. Um, it's just a matter of, A, identifying qualified contractors, B, working with them to the point where they have given us a proposal, and then C, getting it in front of the board for uh, official approval and report of the expenditure. Or let me and Steve and Pat Murray get a kitchen in there. <laughs> Buy the boxes, put them in. What, just out of curiosity, what makes you think after going through two cycles, well, the last cycle with no responses at all, you're going to be able to go out informally and talk to somebody and they'll be interested in talking to you? Uh, because I have a relationship with both Charlie and John, two people who walked away from the project previously. And they're going to be happy to walk back in? No, I don't think they will be happy, but I think they might do it. Okay. If okay. I've given the authority, me, to deal with that, we don't need to hear from 10 different people. Are there questions, comments, questions, questions, thoughts? Two comments. If, let's say that we and I think this is what we're just about to have to do, is direct the chief, or the chief of the manager, however you want to do it, to go out and negotiate with a properly uh, registered contractor to do the kitchen project. I, I think we ought to suggest that as part of that negotiation, they ask the contractors, would it be advantageous to us to supply the appliances and they take care of the installation. I don't know, I, I, I'm going back and forth. This, you know, if we buy the appliances and say, here they are, you know the contractor is going to say, I could have gotten it cheaper if you'd let me do it. No matter whether they could or couldn't, you're going to get that comment. But I'm just wondering if, if, if maybe they say, hey, we don't want to go bother getting the appliances and having them delivered and all that. You have them sitting here on the site and I'll take care of the installation. That's just one idea. Yeah, I'm prepared but to do whatever it takes. The, the other thing I was just wondering, and, and I, in reading the sort of scenario of what's happened here, the chronology, uh, there was mold under the kitchen sink, as I understand it. And a couple other places, I guess. Okay, well, that's, that, that was my question, because I wondered, why did the cabinets get removed on the other side of the kitchen, yeah. where there was no plumbing? There was mold in a, a bunch of different places in the kitchen. They did the remediation. And okay, I just, I just wondered. That's all. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go down this way. I opt for the chief to take care of it <laughs> quickly. And it is, oh, that's right. Not to exceed. I was going to ditto that and say not to exceed $87,000 is my direction. So you're relatively sure that you can go in this direction and not get in trouble? Huh? Yes. My honest opinion. In terms of the informal bidding you're asking? Nobody cares. Um, yes, in terms of the informal bidding, I, I am relatively confident that you are within compliance. I've actually spoken to two different legal entities on this. Okay. But I don't think you need to go back out to bid at okay. this point in time. Um, go forth at light speed, please. Thank you. That's fine. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your comments. You said it's fine. What? what is oh, I asked if it would be up to eighty-seven thousand dollars, and Jeff said yes, that's fine. Eighty-seven thousand. 
don't don't make it that hard, James. No, I I didn't. I mean, I heard him say it's fine, but I didn't hear what he was saying. It's fine to 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 the effect of, of inviting the chief at lightning speed to make it's fine to what to move ahead with this. Lightning speed. Lightning quickly. speed quickly. 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 quickly without a specified dollar amount. No, up to eighty-seven thousand dollars. Eighty-seven thousand. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Um, I wanted to thank Eric for uh, providing this um, rundown uh, because it's been such a long process that um, people either didn't remember or didn't know um, that it's not because of us not trying to complete this kitchen and the kitchen is not done. Um, the staff and board have been doing all we can to get it done. We are bound by law, we are bound by uh, finances, and that's what has been the constraining factor. Um, I personally like 70 much better than 87. I'll do what I can. And I know you can. Um, uh, so I have faith in you. Having said that, I think everybody is just so tired of it. It's at this point, it's just like um, again, please no Rolls Royce. And I know you're a reasonable person, and you're going to be um, doing the best you can. And um, thank you for taking it on. And um, so, so this is my fault. I Godspeed. I wasn't uh, fully versed in public works projects as we entered into this, and I learned a lot over the initial months. So, so that did, put us put so us behind the you. timeline a little bit as we started, but I would agree with the chief. I mean, so did we all. You know, and we all had to kind of learn and figure it out as we go along, and we all have the uh, uh, gift of a uh, public works department or an uh, expert in public works, and. Uh, at this point in time, we're damn near experts in public uh, works, laws, and projects. Uh, but uh, I just I appreciate what I'm hearing because it's something that's just has to move forward. Has to move forward quickly. Uh, oh, Earth. Cool. 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 Oh, this, my experience with remodeling is it always runs about 25 percent more than the contract. I suggest that if you, if we feel that eighty-seven thousand dollars. And I, because I did it in my head, I figured 88,000 uh, is a good number. Then the contract with the contractor shouldn't be any more than about $66,000. Because he will come up with extras and you'll get up to 87 really easily. If you start at 87, you're going to go to 100. So I really think the board needs to step out and step back and not micromanage this project. I think that that's, I, I think if we've kind of made the direction, we need to trust at some point in time that the staff, the staff will make those appropriate recommendations. I've worked on a number of projects with contractors where it's been on budget and you know time has been a factor. So I don't want to make any assumptions that a contractor going over budget. Um, I mean, those things happen for sure, but I think we want to say, you're going to take care of it. You'll report back. Thank you very much. That's what I would think. That just I want to build some trust and some good faith here. And we've, you know, everybody's been trying their best. But I think at some point we do need to step back and just say let it happen. Um, and also, I think that one of the reasons why projects go over so much is because of the unknowns. Because when they start taking things apart, they make discoveries. We've already taken everything apart. It's all exposed. Now it's just going to be putting in cabinets, putting in the, the water wall, getting the sink, the dishwasher, et cetera, and the new appliances. But we've pretty much ripped that kitchen apart. Everything's exposed. So my only comment is I want to thank the state of California <laughs> for totally destroying the ability for people to pay for things in a reasonable way. Okay. Thank you. It's like the Navy and French. Comes to the public. Ron. Yes, I just like to remind the board and the firefighters that the Marinwood taxpayers will only be paying for 75% of this project, <laughs> and CSA 13 will be happily paying for 25% 
of the project. Water. So please keep that in mind when you're throwing numbers around as to exactly what the Marinwood taxpayers would be paying and not what the total cost of the project might be. Thank you. Um, getting back to the existing RFB or P or whatever it is, is that the document that you were thinking you want to go from, that you're going to use? And that particular document does not have a refrigerator, does not have any kitchen lighting, and does not have any <coughs> kitchen painting. So yeah, I'm that, just asking, that thing's going in the garbage. I'm sorry. That thing's going in the garbage. I got a set of plans, and I know what the kitchen needs. We don't need the RFB anymore. Well, OK, but someone over here said that we're going to use the existing RFP. We've got it. I've got a set of plan plans, a contractor drawings, and a permit, okay. and a set of plans. OK, so then I, if it's, this is my opinion, but just from last year and listening to all the conversations that you have had with Mr. Pope and how well it was going with the coordination and the downsizing a little bit here, or not downsizing, but you know, changing this and changing that. And, and obviously, we're not going to go with the best, but obviously, we're not going to go with IKEA either. But just it sounded so good with Mr. Pope that I would think that he would be one of the people you would be talking to again. <clears throat> And if you want some volunteers to crawl and beg him, I'll be willing to do it. Thank you. Any other yeah, so I, you know, what was it, a year and a half ago when um, uh, the chief brought a uh, bid for $25,000? And I have a feeling we're getting the $25,000 kitchen, but we're paying $87,000 for it and uh, a year and a half's worth of agony uh, for all the parties involved. I hope, and, and, and quite frankly, we're kind of back to square one where we're looking for ways to minimize the cost. Um, I, I still believe that if you did this the right way, you could find some willing person to uh, build you a, a a decent kitchen for uh, not a king's ransom there. I don't quite understand why we're uh, trying to have it both ways by pretending to to comply but then finding ways that maybe we don't have to comply. Um, I think it's a mistake um, and I just hope in other decisions in the future that you keep this in mind, we're now looking at a maintenance shed which has a ridiculous price tag on it, in my opinion. And if you're starting out at that, I, if this is going to be the Taj Mahal of maintenance sheds. Um, so, very disappointed in the stewardship and leadership of this board. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the fire activity summary and chief report. I'm sorry. Are we oh, we not making any board decision as to how much money the chief can spend on I the have, kitchen? I have got no board direction. Uh, I have board direction. Yeah, you provide a good direction. Any contract, I mean, we have the expenditure authorization thing. It'll come before this board for final approval anyway. Any further discussion? All right, um, thank you. Uh, all right, let's move on to the fire TV summary and chief report. Um, I think I touched on all. Just busy training wheels up, getting ready to go on shift. So <coughs> vegetation management, planning, um, the succession of the ESS, the kitchen. Um, there was some information I included on Mira because at some point the board's going to have to consider uh, someone taking my spot on that governing board. If you want to do it, Eric's talked about doing it. There's it's a combination. There's Chief I, 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 there's chief officers, there's managers, <laughs> and there's elected body members. Can we trade off? Okay. Is, is Bill doing it? Oh, you. Oh, who's who volunteered? Oh, I took my hand out. I'm happy to do it. But oh, other people want to do it or share. Do you want to do it? Let me tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a cool board to be a part of. There's some really bright people in there. 
and it's very collaborative by 29 different agencies around the county. So um, I've learned a ton and I've met some really good people. So anyway, I'll send an email out when the next governing board meeting is and if anyone's interested, they can come with me. Okay. Uh, and also I touched on the, the utility. Having some issues with the utility, it's kind of dated. We had some challenges with it uh, off-road on the fire road on a couple incidents. Uh, I had to make the call to take it out of service from uh, emergency responses up into the open space area just because uh, how it was explained to me, it wasn't safe to put up in those positions. So we're currently using it around town to run errands. Uh, that's about it. We do have money in the budget for a utility. It's something that uh, the fire commission will be considering in the next month, and it'll probably come before the board. Once again, in light of um, some of the comments that were made earlier about San Rafael and the um, shared services agreement, is there a possibility, you know, as we are conducting our research, what to do with the fire department, the possibility of a loaner? Don't know, but we'll look into it. Good question. Two things. One is looking at the, um, the calls. Um, looks like half of them go into San Rafael to an initiated person. If I'm looking at the fire department uh, budget, it's a two million dollar house. Two plus. Two plus. If half of our service goes to San Rafael, we are basically providing them services worth $1 million. In a simplistic way, you can put it that way, but I've heard before, and it's open to debate, that we subsidize San Rafael with our responses into, the, into the, their city. Um, but we have the bandwidth to do it. They send us a number of resources in exchange when we need them, automatic aid, battalion chief, all, I, all that I other understand, stuff. but basically... So the argument you may, just made will be discussed with San Rafael is the ESS subcommittee meets with them and attempts to negotiate some sort of an agreement with them moving forward. Any other questions, comments? Um, yeah, Yeah, so uh, the first thing I want to say about this uh, note uh, from Caesar, Caesar, um, uh, that description of that cardiac arrest and our firefighters waiting for uh, a truck just, it just boggles my mind. Um, I don't know if in emergency, if this, some of our parks department's vehicles, they're certainly capable of going up there, you know, why not press those into service? It just seems like that man's life was hanging by a thread and people were just waiting for a truck. So I, I don't want to criticize that response, but I just think that um, looking forward, um, there should be some flexibility. You should have the keys to, to get those uh, uh, vehicles if you need them. Um, so that's item number one. Um, with regards to the subsidizing uh, and talking about the future of the, the department, I suggest as an opening gambit, or not gambit, but a, a working point that you look at how much uh, Santa Venetia, I forget what they call it, CSA 19? CSA 19 contract is a great model, and that's at the forefront of the tough discussion. Right, so that, but they pay only 1.9 for that, so. They pay 75% of the operating costs of that fire station. And okay. they, also, they also pay 40% of the construction costs. Well, uh, okay, so that's, I, I was just looking at the San Rafael budget, and I saw, Chief? Yeah, I'm well, I, Okay, so you're talking about, new construction, but I, that was, wasn't what I was talking about. I was talking about operating. So, if, I mean, to me, if I were sitting in that room, I'd say, give us the same deal. We'll give you our uh, fire qual highly qualified firefighters and the use of the uh, facility we have here. I, I, I'm going to agree with 
Stephen right now, which is weird. But yeah, so <laughs> if we can get that deal, it'd be pretty sweet. Well, I, I, you know, for the future of the district, for everybody's uh, future pensions, it would be a great thing. And I think, and I, I did actually take the initiative because I happened to know the mayor. I said, "Hey, Mayor Phillips, do you want 1.1 1 .1 or 1.9 million bucks?" He said, "Yeah." <laughs> he, he was fascinated uh, that I came up with that. I also talked to a fire commissioner. That's one of their models to make uh, uh, make their budgets work is to bring in outside revenue. So um, if you instead of you know coming with a hat in hand, you say we're going to put put money in your pocket. I think, <laughs> I think you can get somewhere. There you go. That's all I have to say. Any other comments from the public? Um, the date of next fire commission meeting is March 6th. And now we can move on to park and rec matters. Only a half an hour behind. Sorry. Any questions? We have the minutes. Hmm? Are we on the minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Got minutes. Yeah. Anyone have any questions, comments? Any questions, comments from the public? Stephen. Yeah, on, on the minutes, uh, you know, once again, the minutes are really kind of obscuring my points. I, I don't know why this is done other than to throw out a different viewpoint. I, I just want faithful reporting of what I say. And what I said was there's the EIR issue and the fact that um, a nature preschool in that location and a uh, playground would be far more useful to the public and we have the space here next to the fire uh, the firehouse which is not going to have the, the conservation easement and um, any money spent in a illegal location is bad money spent and you'll find out <coughs> But anyhow, these were, that was the point, those were the points made at the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to item, oh, any other questions on the parking lot minutes? All right, moving on to item two, review current open space encroachment policy. Uh, I included this uh, policy primarily as a follow-up to or had some requests in terms of open space enforcement. I know he brought up a couple very specific items, uh, but I put the policy in here because this is the only tool that we have uh, in terms of rules and regulations, even though we don't necessarily have an in-house enforcement option, per se, on some of these. Uh, I know on one of his things, in fact, they even made another follow-up call today. Uh, it definitely seems like it had some code enforcement concerns with it as well. So I uh, followed back up with code enforcement because we filed a uh, complaint with one of the properties that he mentioned back in November. Um, their standard practices, they don't necessarily get back to the people who follow up. I just want to know if they ever even looked at it, paid attention to it. It uh, certainly seemed like it had a lot of code issues involved with it. So with that, I kind of leave it back to Irv and whatever uh, his thoughts were on this particular subject. Did you get a response back from Not yet. Yeah. yeah. You probably won't either, because they probably haven't done anything. They have no staff up there. Everyone that's left. There's only like two people. lot of them have. Yeah. And the other, for sure, the fellow with the trailers and the Winnebago and all, that fits into the ordinance precisely as to prohibitions. And I know, I thought that we'd talk to him, you know, which one this is, uh, it's pretty, what are we doing? The, the, oh, yeah, 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 uh, Kedoni, the Kedoni, the Kedoni, Kedoni Creek, uh, uh, and let him know that, hey, you're kind of parked in a place that shouldn't be parked, I don't know that he ever necessarily cared or moved it, I mean, the only other option is to start getting in law enforcement, I guess, I don't know if the sheriff would even pick it up and say, hey, you have to move this vehicle, uh, it's not on a street, so I, I don't, Enforcement is a concern that we have because we don't really have an enforcement arm. It's and as, as opposed to an HOA, I don't think we can put a lien on a house. That's the benefit of 
upper Lucas Valley arrangement when you have no compliant homes. I just think it's inappropriate for someone to be able to park a vehicle, a big vehicle, and two or three trailers and some other junk on our open space, as it is equally inappropriate for the neighbor a couple of doors down to put a large amount of fill into our open space, take out some trees, fence in the area he filled, then put a shed in the middle of that. And we're saying, county code enforcement, take care of it. I'm going to be way too old to enjoy that open space by the time county code enforcement does anything. No. Thanks, I mean, is there anything else we can do other than send upsetting Have letters? we sent letters or any kind of code truck? You don't know. I don't know. We send letters to them? Uh, to Cadoni, we had a, a, Both. a conversation. And then on the other one, yeah, I mean, we certainly, again, ran into that gentleman <coughs> as well and then filed it playing with county code. I mean, I'm happy to draft him a letter uh, uh, stating that where we're at, but you know, all I can do is say, take down your fence or a makeshift retaining wall, uh, uh, move it all back, bring out a surveyor, mark the vines. Uh, but when he says to the letter, there, you know, there's not a heck of a... What about, I, I what about this kind of trespassing? Yes. Maybe county council needs to be asked the question of what we can do. Or we can ask them. How can we um, get the penalties? Uh, Five hundred dollars. Fifty. Fifty for civil and. Uh, so can I? I mean, this is not an action item, and it's getting very late. So can we? I'm not sure what we need to do with this at the moment. I mean, is this something we need to take action on, or? Sure so can can we for now ask the district manager to write two letters to the said addresses, and I will put it on the next month agenda. Sure. That works. I'm happy to write the letters and mail them off. I mean, well, at least we'll have some formal documentation. We'll build a trail, so to speak. Sure. Uh, and that's real quick. If you go ahead and start doing this because somebody files a complaint, you are going to be setting precedent for all kinds of complaints coming into the district. And you're going to be going nuts with trying to organize, figure out how much money it's going to take, how much time it's going to take, knocking on doors, writing letters, talking to council, blah, 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 blah. You're going to go nuts with this. It's too expensive for the, for the district. We, don't, we can't afford it. Just in a moment of brevity and lightheartedness, I think we let Steve take care of it. <laughs> Look, you, you, you said it right. If, if, if uh, someone parked a trailer in your driveway, you don't have to be nice. You just call the police. Yeah. That's trespassing. Yeah. I, I, this ordinance is problematic. I don't think you want to go there. The code enforcement, I don't think that has teeth either. But trespassing does, and quite frankly, I think you could call a tow truck tomorrow without any notice and, and have it impounded and it be done with it. It's his problem. Um, you might want to do it a little bit more politic than that, but uh, this, is, this is probably a, a quite a simple problem to solve. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the park recreation and park maintenance activity reports. Your last one. My last one. Um, I'm not going to go into too much depth. Does anybody have any questions about it? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> well, maybe Luke wants to say something. Yeah. <laughs> you can be a little long winded. No, no, no. no. Just, just questions. Oh, okay. Everyone only has questions. I don't have any questions. Okay, well. Everything okay at the burn? Good there? Burns are pretty good. Uh, I want to thank everybody. Thank the board. Um, thank the community, wherever they are. Um, for a good two decades, it's been a fun and wild ride. Um, and also, we do have a wine event coming up, uh, not this Saturday, but the Saturday after. Luke's offered to buy everybody tickets on the board, and you guys can bring an additional person as part of this uh, taking over. So we oh, hope wow. to see you guys there. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to get Shane drunk. <laughs> <laughs>
It's my last event, so come on by. Oh, oh we didn't come to that. You're drinking. I've never seen it. Somebody's got to, you know. Somebody's got to drive. Yeah. I'll drive. No, but th thank you guys. It's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a good time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm concerned he has redefined the community from uh, a bunch of old folks to the funnest place for for kids in uh, northern Marin maybe southern Marin too and um, he's 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 really really changed the perception of Marinwood and I, I his contribution cannot be underestimated so I would like to propose we have a bronze statue. <laughs> <laughs> but it can only be this high. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I, I, I know it's going to be around, but I still, I still, uh, I, anything we can do to, to uh, I, and I think if we have an opportunity to work with uh, Shane's uh, amazing camps, um, I think we should uh, definitely consider it. So. Yeah. Thank you. So the well, data I, I would like to add one more thing about Shane. Um, personally, I think that he is so easy to get along with, and he's, I mean, I'm amazed. You know, you all think I'm so difficult. Shane <laughs> is wonderful with me. He's wonderful with the people that work for him, with him. All of, everybody loves Shane, and I think that's one reason why you have been able to do as much as you can. <coughs> is because of your calmness, your personality, your evenness, your fairness, your hardworking attitude. And I hope that you have the same thing. I'm on your side of the... All right, Luke. No, I, think, I think Luke will be really good. Luke, Luke has it. But you guys are cool. Are you trying to get first, though? Right. <laughs> So, um, the day of the next part of our meeting. Shh, shh, shh. February 27th. Um, item K, new and other business requests for future meeting agenda items. Anybody got anything? Linda? I'm going to ask the same thing I've asked for the last six meetings. I would like to see a written policy for a communication response from the district manager. And I mentioned this again because I did talk to someone who sent in an email months ago and never received a response. So I just think that we need some sort of a policy and it's possible, I know that I've sent him emails and I haven't gotten a response, but then two weeks or three weeks later, I would and I find out he's on vacation. And maybe you just need to put a little doohickey in your computer saying, so and so is on vacation right now. Call so and so. Um, I think that might help in communication, but there definitely is a communication problem. Thank you. Any other? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Damien Connolly was uh, elected the uh, president of the board of supervisors, and of course he is our uh, uh, supervisor, and he's running for re-election um, at the. He has been absolutely fantastic for Marinwood, in my view, because he, he well, for one thing, he used to live here, and, uh, and I do believe he thinks of us as uh, one of his base, base areas of support. Um, I would encourage, at the very minimum, that the board recognize and congratulate him on his election of the Board of Supervisors. And if I ask you to endorse him, I would encourage you to endorse him. Um, 
because I think, you know, he's not perfect, but none of them are. Uh, but uh, uh, it's the politic thing to do if you bring money into our district. Um, sadly, by law, we're forbidden to do that. To do what? To endorse a political candidate. As a board. As a, no, as not as a board. As individual. Yeah, right. oh. but, 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 but what I'm talking about is just congratulations for being elected pre for, you know, president of Brit Board of Supervisors. It's just good politics. Thank you. Uh, any recognitions and board member items of interest? We don't want to recognize Shane. Yeah. Somewhere along the line. Can Shane, you did okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it. No. <laughs> I, I'm going to miss you. I, I know Luke is great and awesome. So, I mean, yes, we've been really lucky that you stayed as long as you did. Spoiled. Spoiled, yes. Wait until, wait until we start telling the stories after he's gone. He has no attitude. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, well, I've been doing this for years, so. Yeah.